Hello and welcome to Ahead of the Curve. This is your host, Jonathan Gellner, and thank you so much for joining us. Today's episode is brought to you and powered by Stick and Ball TV, the baseball and softball streaming platform. If you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, I highly encourage you to do so because there are literally hundreds of videos just waiting to help you get better. Check it out at stickandball.tv or on the Stick and Ball TV mobile app. For today's show, we have on Spencer Allen, head baseball coach at Northwestern University. Spencer became the 26th head baseball coach of the Northwestern program on June 14, 2015. Before coming to Northwestern, he served as the assistant coach at Illinois in 2015, helping the Fighting Illini to set the school record with 50 wins and won the first NCAA regional in program history. The Illini ranked near the top of the Big Ten in numerous offensive categories, leading the league in hits, runs, RBIs, total bases, home runs, and slugging percentage. Prior to Illinois, Allen served a two-year stretch as the associate head coach and recruiting coordinator at Creighton, reaching the College World Series. From 2010 to 12, Allen worked as the assistant coach and recruiting coordinator at Washington State University, and he also had stops with the Purdue Boilermakers, the Detroit Tigers organization, and going all the way back to the beginning of his career, he was at Edmonds Community College in 2002. He also played three seasons at Iowa State from 1999 to 2001 and was a team captain in all Big 12 academic selection. So on the show, we discuss the pillars that Northwestern is built upon which includes a high challenge, high support environment, and deliberate practice. You're going to love this episode with Spencer Allen. Coach Allen, welcome to the show. Jonathan, thank you for having me. This is uh, a a pleasure to to be here and excited to uh, chat with you today. Of course, of course. So I am obviously really excited to get to learn from you today and, and get to uh, get to really pick your brain about a lot of different things that you guys are doing well. But I did want to rewind the clock just a little bit. And so we can kind of, we can understand where you're at now, but how you started whenever you first started. So if we could roll back to year one. So just think you're going through the interview process, you get the job and you're starting like from a blank slate of, hey, this is how I want us to play. This is how I want the program run. Just kind of uh, walk us through some of your first steps, and then you know what you were thinking whenever you first started. Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, you know, really, it, it makes me think going through the interview process. I think anytime you you interview, right, you you really have to think about things like this. What is your vision? What you know? What do you want your program to to look like? And three words kind of came up, and it's it's been what we have talked about a lot here at, at Northwestern, um, but it's trust, passion, and development. Uh, if there's any of my players that are listening or former, they're, they're probably rolling their eyes right now. But, <laughs> um, you know, that, that was big for us, I, I think, for, for a couple reasons. One, we, we wanted to um, establish that trust early uh, as we inherited a, a good group. We, we had a good group of guys um, but they, they had a new coach and a new coaching staff. And so we, we really wanted to establish that, that trust uh, with them. And then as, as well as uh, with recruits, uh, it, it, it was something that anytime you're looking to, to take over a program, um, you're, you're trying to get players to, to buy in, not just to Northwestern University, but to you and your, your coaching staff. And, and my coaching staff just did a great job with that. Um, I think passion, I think for me, thinking more so of just trying to show up every day with that passion um, and playing with it. Um, and and that's, I think that's something that uh, sometimes I, I probably fought a little bit because I wanted everyone to be, you know, that, that passionate player. And sometimes that's not necessarily what fits into their, uh, you know, their personality. So, you know, trying to fit that a little bit um was, you know, I, I had to adjust, right? And, and then just development. I it just, again, wanted guys every day uh, to have that, that mindset, that developmental mindset, um, and to, to come to the, the park every day to get better. You know, I, I've done, I think, 
200 and maybe you might be like 230 or, or something just crazy like that. And, and it seems like that comes up a lot. It's like, okay, we have this vision and we know what we need to do. And now it's like, let's just, now we have to go put in the work every single day. And so it's like success, you know, right. Saban talks a lot about the process all the time, but then you ha- he has all of his assistant coaches who go and they, they can never beat him because I, one reason or another, I'm sure, but it's like he has, he has the discipline to do that every single day when I think a lot of guys mm-hmm. don't and, and Belichick's kind of the same way that they're cut from the same cloth. And so, I mean, that's, I, I love that. And, and just, yeah, I, is that something that, that you learned over time? Because I know as a young coach, I was wanting to do everything. And now I'm like, what can, what less can we do? <laughs> just more of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that really hits for me, Jonathan, with, with, um, when taking over a program, I, I, I think back and it's like, I, I did want to do everything. You know, I, we wanted to have the, the best first pitch dinner and, and we wanted to be the best obviously on the field and recruiting, but with alumni. And um, I, I would say that would be one thing that I would, I would really, I would have scaled back and tried to grow into some of those things versus trying to take it all on and, and uh, be, you know, have the best first pitch <laughs> uh, dinner. Um, I, I think really just trying to bear down and focus in with, with the guys um and, and with recruits that, that that just that just takes a lot and and like you said to show up like to truly truly show up with that um energy um it, you know that it, it takes a lot out of you you know and so i i think that would have been one of the things that i really would have tried to scale back and really just hone in on um the, the baseball side of things no doubt, no doubt. I th- I think that's that's fantastic, and I it's a learning process for all of us, right? I mean, if we haven't, if there's not things that we would change, then we haven't grown as as much as we need to. But I, I so you sent me, and we're gonna have a little bit of a different format today than I usually do because you sent me some main ideas and some maybe pillars or just things that you've learned along the way, and I love that. So th- once once again, thank you for doing that. But. I'm going to start with oh, yeah. with the underdog story. So tell us a little bit about your mother. Tell us about the underdog and tell us what that means uh, uh, for you. Yeah, you know, and, and, and thanks for, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, so 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 my so my mom, it, it actually started. Um, it, it was it was the I can't remember the, the Super Bowl, but it was it was um, the Buffalo Bills. Um, when Scott Norwood missed the, the field goal wide right. Um, and and I'll, I'll never forget that because I, I believe that was for the Niners. And I, you know, I wanted the Niners. I didn't want, the, I didn't like the Bills at the time. And I, I'll just never forget my, my mom, like she couldn't let go. Like she just felt so bad, you know, for the kicker. And, and just as, I, as I've followed kind of her through, through her life, what she's really instilled in me um, it, it is just that, that really caring heart, right? That, that idea of, of we, we have to look out for the underdog. We, ha- we have to really have empathy. I think that's the first time I really heard that word and got a, a clear understanding of what that, that means. And um, so that, that just really stuck with me. And, and, and for, for me, I, I think she's, doesn't matter what it is, she's always rooting for the underdog. Even sometimes when we win, we, we hit a walk off and she's like, Oh, I feel so bad for that picture. I'm like, mom, we won. Right, <laughs> you know? of course. Uh, but, but she, she just, she just really um, is, is empathetic and, and caring and, and has instilled that in, in me and, and has helped me just again, because for every team, right, you're going to have some guys that are doing great. Uh, but guys that are, that are struggling and, and, and as a coach, we have to be there for, uh, all of our guys, you know, guys that are, that are playing well and doing well, and as well as the ones that are battling through it. Uh, so one of the next pillars that you mentioned, and it's somebody that I, I think a, a lot of our guests are familiar with, and that's Brian Kane, uh, peak performance coach. And uh, yeah. I know that I've used him, used his stuff for a long time. And so you, you liked two, or well, I guess we want to talk about two of his main ideas, which the first one is compared to what, and the second one is dominate the day. So break those down for us, if you don't mind. 
Yeah, the, the, uh, again, uh, my players would be uh, <laughs> rolling their eyes, but but I, I just love compared to what, right? Of of you, you can put it into a baseball game. You lose a tough baseball game. Um, you, you're going through a tough stretch, and and you you can always just utilize that of like, guys, I, I know we're struggling right now, and and we we want to you know just kind of sit in our sorrow, but like compared to what? And and, and I think what we really try to do. And this is actually a great um, way to, to, to get to know your team is, is have each one of your guys uh, come up with a compared to what. And boy, you, you talk about some powerful stories. We, we had an assistant coach uh, who's at Colby College now who shared one um, uh, about a, uh, the, the, the late um, – uh, Travis Roy, the the the, uh, the hockey player that that got paralyzed, and he shared a video. Um, and gosh, it, it it was just, I mean, guys were crying, right? And and so it, it's like when, when when things are really, you know, you're down on your luck, and and things are just not going well. Um, you just have that ability to go, well, okay, compared to compared to what, right? Compared to the guy that's, you know, that was just paralyzed, the the, the guy that you know. Uh, my, my days, my, my, my three strikeouts aren't so bad. So I just, I love that, um, that thought Definitely. process. And then, and then, dom, you know, dominate the day is just really, you know, talking up uh, uh, kind of what we, we, you had just talked about a little bit earlier is just that, that, Hey, every day, right? Like every day you got to come up and try to dominate, not, not just, you know, your bull, bullpen session, but it's got to be the, your, your weightlifting in the classroom, um, you know, with, with your, your friends as a teammate, everything, it's all encompassing of just truly trying to be the best, uh, in, in all areas of, of your life. Um, so those, those are just two things that, that, that back in 2011, that, that I, I, I got from, from Brian Kane and, um, it just have really stuck with me. I love those. And I even find myself, <laughs> you know, I, it, it, no matter what level I feel like players are at, they're always looking to the next thing. And and I feel like a lot of our coaches, you know, do that too. Of If you're assistant, you want to be a head coach. If you're a head coach, you want a better head coaching job. If you get that better head coaching job, you want to keep that head coaching job. And you're thinking 10 years down in the future. And, and it's a constant just uh, just thing that everyone has to go through in a, in a, in a really a vicious cycle. And so I love, mm-hmm. I love hearing that. And I just, you know, I think it's, that it's a constant reminder for, you know, not only your players, but just for me too, of, Hey, just be where your feet are and take care of what needs to be taken care of today, dominate today. And then, you know, for me as a person of faith, letting, letting tomorrow take care of itself. And for me, obviously letting, letting God take care of it and, and not trying to control everything. And so, um, anything you'd like to add to that? Sorry, I, I kind of got us off track a little bit, but I definitely feel very passionate about that as well. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's, um, you know, again, you mentioned it of, of you know, there, there, there's so much stuff out there. And, and this was actually kind of fun to, to go through and do because, you know, it really gets you to kind of synthesize and be like, okay, you know, Spence, what do we really utilize as a program, right? And and um, I, I think there, there are just some things that, you know, when, when you step back and really look, it, it just, um, you know, it's something that I'll, that I'll say, uh, to my players, it, it's something that we use with our family, my kids, you know, dominate the day, dad. Um, I think it, it, it's there, there's, again, there's a lot of stuff we can all go on Twitter or social media, right? Um, but just certain things just kind of uh, really gel and, and make sense to, to, to me. And those, those are just two things that really uh, have stuck with me and I try to, to live by. Another another thing that uh, and with when you said these pillars, I was like, yeah, I did that wrong. Yeah, I did that wrong. And yeah, I'm probably doing that wrong right now. And one of the one of the things that that uh, that you mentioned was consistent or a uh, high challenge and high support. So we want to challenge them, but we want to support them in the same way. And I again, I looking back to younger self, I wanted to be a high support, and I didn't know that you could do both. And I, I, the longer that I coach, the more I'm like, no, we have high standards here. We're going to love you, but we're going to, we're going to hold you to those high standards. And I really like the high challenge, high support thing. And, and you said, you mentioned Travis Wyckoff, who I'm not familiar with. I don't know if you, you know, want to give him a shout out or not, but I love the saying, tell us more about it. 
Yeah, so so Travis, uh, I actually played with Travis, or excuse me, I, I coached with Travis um, at Creighton University. Travis played at Wichita State, and uh, back in the '90s when they they were really rolling, and um, he, he he works uh, as, as kind of his own a consultant with Kingdom Coaching. Has just done great great work with with uh, me and a lot of other coaches, baseball coaches around the country, mainly college. Um, it works with, with some other um, sports as well. But, you know, this is something that he's talked a lot about. And, and it's interesting, Jonathan, because the, the one thing that you said right there, that's exactly what he asks every coach to do is like, OK, hey, where where do you fall on this kind of meter? Like, are you more on the on the the, the high challenge side of the spectrum? Or are you more on the high support? Because, it, it, you know, he gives great examples of guys that, it, you, you can't just be one of the, you, you can't just be this super high support. And that's, mm-hmm. that was probably me too of, you know, cause players, you know, especially, you know, good players, they, they want to be challenged. You know, they may not say it and um, it, it's not dog cussing them out or anything to, to that extent, but they, they do want to be challenged. Um, but on, on the same side of things is that if, if that's all you're doing is challenging, right. It can kind of come off as, you know, this is all about me and, and, and wins. And um, th- there has to be a little bit of, of that support. So just really trying to find that balance. And it starts with kind of that self-awareness. All right. If, if I am a little bit more on the support side, I've got to be really intentional with and in making sure that I'm challenging guys uh, and, and then being able to challenge them uh, at different levels. Right. As you have different players. Uh, and then vice versa. So that that's just something that again I I really think about a lot. Hey, am I where am I on this spectrum? Am I too much on the support? Do I need to challenge this group or do I need to support? He Greg Popovich, right? Greg, Great example yeah. of a a guy that you 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 see the 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 high challenge right with the scowl, but um, what people don't realize is he's one of the best at supporting his guys. No, I, I think. In Culture Code, it mentions him, and and they talk about he yeah. he tells them the truth, but he loves them to death. I think was the line, and and I think that that that's really really good. And and so I, I there was another there's another book that I read, Doug Lamov's coaching book. Uh, I can't remember exactly the name of it. Uh, Coach's Guide to Teaching, but he also hmm. mentioned that players, especially elite athletes, they and let me rewind just a second. Uh, with within this, I, I think we've all heard the term. They don't know how much you know, or they don't they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, which I think is is really mm-hmm. true. But it also matters how much we know too, and so and hold them accountable to that because at the end of the day, elite players they want to get better. And if we're just yeah. you know if we're just the high supportive side of that, then it's going to be really really hard for us to help them to be as good as they want to be and then they'll find somebody who is and so i really i love that and i really you know i i i can definitely relate to that saying and i i may be stealing that from you because i think that that's fantastic uh speaking of high challenge or at least high support uh you also mentioned your wife and i know that everyone who's listening uh you know male female our spouses are man i i just can't even begin to we could do a whole podcast over how much a, a spouse uh, and how strong a spouse has to be uh, as a coach's husband or wife. And so uh, tell us a little bit about her and, and how she has helped you to grow as a, not only a, a better man, but a better coach. Yeah. yeah th- thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. So, um, so, so my wife actually played, she played softball. She played at, at Stanford uh, with Jess Mendoza and her, her crew. Um, they, they actually went to the, the um, women's college world series. And so, Definitely understands, um, you know, athletics and, and um, you know, kind of the, the, the coaching life. But as, as you, you grow, right, it, it's, it's you have kids and family and all that, just the challenges uh, really uh, continue just to, to change and, and progress. And so um, she's just done a great job with me. I have to give her a, a lot of credit of, of just creating consistent uh, and healthy habits and, and routines, right? And, and, and making sure that, uh, you know, trying to, to eat properly and trying to, you know, sleep and, and just, just everything, really all, all the routines in my life, making sure that I, uh, I, I stay balanced and that we stay balanced. Um, she just, I just have to give her all, all the credit in, in the world. She, she 
uh, does online training and online nutrition um, and just just does a great job, you know, with with other um, mainly, you know, moms, uh, but but just is, is really an inspiration to, to them and, and, and me as well. So, um, yeah, big, big shout out to uh, to, to Jess uh, Blonde Ponytail uh, is, is her uh, uh, Instagram social media uh, account. So. Well, little shout out. Yeah, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. And you know, I want I want to ask you too with that. So you you get the head you become the head coach and did you already have these in place or is this something that you learned the hard way and then you decided to okay, there, there's got to be a better way for me to set up my day and to eat better because then I feel better and just walk us through your transition from that from one to the other because I'm assuming we all go through that. We can eat whatever we want and feel fine as teenagers. And then once we get to a certain point, like 30 or 40 or whatever, then it's like, okay, I got to do something different because I feel like crap. So was there a transition for you? Yeah, 100% a transition. And, and and I think, you know, we, we, we kind of went through this as an assistant coach, right? And then all of a sudden, as you get a head coaching job, just I really think the the stress, that was one of the things that I was not probably – processing, letting go, uh, communicating, you know, enough. Um, and, and then you add, you know, the, our, our second kid, our son. <laughs> so just all, I think all of those challenges continue to um, evolve and, you know, got to, I would say a, a bad spot, but, you know, just, it was, it was tough. There, there was definitely, and an, um, she really just would, would call me out kind of on my um, bad, uh, habits <laughs> and bad r- routines and um you know it's just really been been great for me and not that i'm it's a daily right you're you're constantly trying to improve and, and get better in the, in those areas but i feel feel much more healthy and and and, and you know just jiving a lot better and um uh, that's fantastic and it's awesome that you have a wife that that keeps you in check with all of that stuff too which is cool so uh, another another guy that uh, yeah. that I recognize is Greg Swenson, and I, I think he's at like the Swins fifty seven on Twitter, and I, I followed him for a long time. And it's yep. like I, I don't know what he did, but whenever yeah. I started following him, I think he was out of coaching, or maybe he was a pitching coach somewhere. But I was like, this guy is super bright. Like I and I barely knew who he was, and then started getting yeah. some guys up in in the in the Northwest who knew who he was and were friends with him, and they're like, he's a he's brilliant. But tell us about uh, tell us a little bit about him, yeah. and then what you learned from him, and that everything that happens to you, it's your fault. Yeah, so so that everything that happens to you is your fault. It, it, you know, it's one of those things that can kind of come off a little brash, and, and sometimes uh, Swint's big shout out. He uh, we, we coached together at Washington State. Um, did you know did a great job with, with staffs there and and with the mental game just all of those things but he he I just always remember that line from him of just because it, and, and really he explains it that it works both ways right that it that it's not just this is not just a, a you know kind of a negative connotation it's like hey listen if you you know come in and become an all big ten you know player like there's others that are are helping you along the, on the way but you know, you get to take credit for that. But on the flip side of that, um, you know, if, if you come in and, and you're, you're, you're not a starter and maybe, maybe your role's not there, if you have that mindset, um, then, then you're, you're just never looking left and right. You're never looking to make excuses. Um, you're going to own it. You're going to look where to where you can get better, um, to where you can go, hey, okay, I worked through this and now I'm I'm in a much better spot, and I'm I'm the success that I'm having. Um, it's because of the work, um, or it's my fault. And, and so I've just always I've always loved that. Uh, so the next one I've got here is from Bernie Holiday, who is the sports performance director coordinator. Uh, I can't remember the exact title for the Pirates. And you mentioned training versus trusting mindset. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so so this is an, and I know you've done a ton of, of work in in this and and actually there, there's a couple of guys that I know you've interviewed that I've listened to on, on your podcast that um, you know just just speak and, and do great in in kind of in this this area but yeah just just really the, the training versus trusting mindset it's something that this year we've talked a lot just as, as our coaches just to be really um, uh, specific and intentful on 
okay, hey, are, are we training right now, right? Are, are, are we, you know, trying to work on a specific skill, taking the, the swing? Okay, hey, I'm going to work on the pitch up in the zone, right? Um, and, and, and it's, you, you're not as worried about, you know, results and, and, and you're, you're really trying to think through like, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really make sure I kind of get my, slot my elbows here, you know, whatever it is you're, you're thinking through. But then getting to the trusting mindset and, and that's now to where I, I'm not thinking through it. I, I'm really just trying to trust my preparation and go out and compete. Um, and, and I think that, that that kind of example there really um, can kind of get you. He, he uses an example of um, this line, train like a squirrel. And, and with that, he, there's, there's actually an article. It's a great article, but he, he talks about, hey, when you see a squirrel running across a, a telephone line, Right. Do you, do you think that that squirrel is like thinking about like, OK, left paw here and right paw here? You know, that squirrel is just trusting, right, his instincts. And, and so anyway, you, you kind of get the picture, right, of just this, um, because obviously the squirrel has a lot to lose if he <laughs> were to fall 20 feet you know, down from that that line. So, um, yeah, I, I just always I've loved that. And we really tried to be intentful with our players on, hey, listen, we're working a drill here, or, hey, we are no trusting so and competing I, here. What I've been using lately, uh, which is similar to that, is the uh, train, bo- or like the training box and the competing box, and I, I think that that's, that's really good. So, you know, can we dig a little bit more yeah. into that from like the practical side of not necessarily things that you've changed, but, uh, or it could be, but also just different instances that you that you can think of that you guys have have done that lately. So you go from this to this, and you're you know you're making sure that that they understand. Hey guys, this is this is when it's time to slot the elbow, and and you know using the the term that you used. Uh, but this is a, that a time to compete against the pitcher, like getting them to shift that mindset. Yep. Can you think of any examples that we could steal from you? Yeah, you know, and, and actually, I really like it. We, we tried to do this. When, when you're trying to um, uh, practice plan. So we had six weeks until our first game. We open up next week. And um, so w- w- with our hitting coach, uh, Dustin Napoleon, w- you know, what we did is we probably, if we had five different cages going on, we've got 15 hitters, right? Three per group. Um, you know, when we first started, we would have three to four um, kind of training type of drills. Right. So maybe, you know, maybe we're doing some med balls and PVC and maybe we're uh, we're doing some some core velocity, really just trying to, you know, get the lower half going Um, and then maybe an individual drill. Well, as you then as we start to get closer to kicking off and playing, right, you now kind of shift that. Like so if you look at our our, uh, rotation today, we had four stations. We had one of them was was what you would, I guess, call probably a more of a training type of station where we, we call it the individual drill. So it's kind of whatever they they feel they need to work on. We've got all the gadgets in the, <laughs> in, in the one cage, you know, the long bat, the short bat, um, you name it. Right. Um, but then the other three uh, it, it's approach based it's there's a result and they are trying to compete. So I think that's that's really one of the, the, the ways I, I like it as far as more of a 30,000 foot level, um, because I, I just think if, if you're really wanting guys to compete in the game, but you're doing a lot of different training drills and you're not working on the trusting mindset of going in and, hey, we're competing here, I think that could be tough to, to then just turn it off and, and not start thinking mechanically. Um, so hopefully that kind of made sense without <laughs> seeing it in front of you. No, I I am. I'm glad you said that because I, I doing some reflecting this off season, I did the opposite of that. I think as, you know, as we grow as coaches, I know that, that a couple of years ago I was Mr. Like eight minutes, a drill, and then you've got 30 seconds to pick up all the balls and then get to the next station. And then, you know, it was just like, it was activity and not necessarily Mm -hmm. a lot of achievement going Mm -hmm. on. And so I, I think now it's like, okay, let's slow down. Let's be very deliberate with what we're trying to do with every rep 
And then let's talk about once the season starts, okay, it's you've got maybe 20% of your time to work on Hey, what's, what's going to help you develop? And this is just, you know, just a number that I'm throwing Mm -hmm. out there, but you've got 20% of time that you've got to work on, you know, what you need, but the other 80% is, Hey, what are we going to do to compete when we get into the box? Like, where are we looking? What are we looking for? What are we going to see? What does spin look like? How do we, how do we make sure we're on time? And then all of those things, because that's what matters. Like that's what matters. If you're a bench player, when you get into the game, you've got to show out and yes, we want to continue developing them. But I think in the past I was like, I thought that those are two separate things. Mm -hmm. And I think once we backwards plan from the game, Mm -hmm. instead of backwards plan from developing skill sets, then I I think that that's for me, that's where it changes. I don't, I don't know if you agree, disagree or, or what, but that's just kind of something that a revolution for me, over the last you know year or two that I've really tried to to get better at. Yeah, and I think the thing too, Jonathan, is I think you'll you'll start to learn, especially in in your setting. I guess really in, in both settings, you know. But you, you'll learn the guys that maybe you can can go back and forth a little bit. That that you know what? Hey, I I can sit here and and, and talk to this guy about you know drifting or or trying to rotate better or you know whatever and he can still then just go out and and compete as well as the guys that that can't handle it right because i I think that that that's a that's a big piece of it too of like okay you you learn that guy man i i can't sit here and talk mechanics with this guy because he's going to be in the box in in two hours doing you know thinking about you know where his you know is he getting his stretch or you know whatever it may be so i think that's another part of that as well for sure and and that's just knowing your players too which i think that that's something i'm glad that you highlighted Mm -hmm. that for sure so our next pillar that we're going to knock out which i (laughs) i guess it it falls right into that is deliberate practice and so i've got (laughs) you put down matt blood and and matt actually left the year that I got to the Rangers, but I did speak with him a little bit and, and he's a really a fantastic yeah. person and, and really, really smart. And he's doing a great job with the Orioles. Uh, but tell us a little bit about, I don't know how you know him, but just deliberate practice. You can speak to Matt if you want to a little bit as well, but just talk to us about the importance of that. Yeah. So I, I got to know Matt when he was with the USA baseball, I got, got to coach, um, you know, some really actually, <laughs> uh hunter green and and uh some pretty high level guys with usa baseball but um you know just to stay in touch with with matt and actually you know one of the things that he um recommended when i when i was talking with him it was two things it was it was a book peak right everyone's read that at the time i had not um and that you know boy that blew my mind but but it was also um you know, a podcast when, when you interviewed, uh, Dave Turgeon Love Dave, with, with yeah. the pirates and, um, yeah, yeah, that, that was, I mean, when I, when I, I listened to those, that, that, that really, that was kind of one of those aha moments reading that book. And then, and then, you know, listening that, that just really sent me down. Um, I, I don't even want to say it's a rabbit hole. Sometimes I feel like people say sure. rabbit hole is a bad thing. It, it just, it just really got me into that more of, um, man, I, I've got a lot of growing to do and a lot of learning to do, to do. And, um, so yeah, we just, just talking about, you know, the, the thought of an idea of, of deliberate practice. And I think it was great to, um, even bring it to my, my coaching staff, you know, uh, coach Reynolds, my pitching coach is like, listen, you know, you're right on with this and we've got to take it a step further and just really go back and look, Hey, how many times do we really come up with the first and third situation okay then why are we working on it you know so we really took a a um uh just a practical use to that just to make sure of like hey let's work on what's showing up in in games um and then and then again making sure that we're really specific about what we are trying to work on and and develop and measure and uh giving good feedback um, and, and just really being, being intentful, right? I, I think that, that, that is something that, you know, we as a staff are, are continuing to, to, to work on and be being better at. So besides, well, you, you mentioned first and third, but whenever you sat down and you looked at trying to be deliberate with what we do, what were some other things that you changed? So you may have done less time on this, more time on this. You may have done this slower, this faster, but what were some really some some highlights of 
because I, I would love to, and whatever staff that you're a part of, I think that this is a fan that you mentioned, just a fantastic exercise of, Hey, what's important to us and, and how do we do it more? But really what were some, what were some highlights within that? And you mentioned a couple of them, but I'd, I'd love for you to dig in a little bit deeper. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that, that we we saw showed up a lot more than than I, I would have thought um, were, you know, it, it's not necessarily um, like a bunt defense, but it but it was like infield communication, right? The 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 pitcher makes a great throws a great change up the right handed pitcher or hitter, you know, gets it off the cap. And now you've got this ball that's you know, there needs to be some type of communication, right? A, a, a chopper, um, you know, at least in, in the college game for, for us, those are things that a lot of times you can look back and go, dang it, like this started a rally, right? Because we didn't, you know, we, we, we thought we had to rush. And so we, we, we've just done a, a, a lot of work on, um, you know, understanding pace of ball, understanding kind of, uh, our, our priorities and and just making sure that we tr we get early communication when we can um, that that was something that that we've done a lot and we'll we'll do a lot of that internal uh, communication and just where we have to make decisions really really quickly um, and and not and, and try to judge them not so much hey do they make a play but you know was there early communication when we needed it. Uh, being really specific on what we were judging them with, um, just so the guys understand the importance of it. That that was one of the big things that that showed up, and, and it really it you know, allowed us to switch what we're focusing on team defensive wise. <laughs> that I've run first and third uh, every day for two weeks because we couldn't quite figure it out. And, and now it's something that I'm like, man, it, it doesn't really come up that much, but we want, you know, and, and I think that for some reason or another, it seems like, and maybe you can speak to this, but it seems like coaches for, for whatever reason are, are judged harshly, harshly on their team's ability to, to play team defense. But then if, if, you know, if our pitchers can't throw strikes or if we're striking out a ton, then it goes back to the players and you're like, <laughs> I think, you know, I just thinking about that and speaking with somebody about that the other day, I, I don't know yeah. why that is, but is that, is that just maybe my perspective or is that, you know, is that something that happens uh, to you as well? No, I think you're, you're hundred percent right. And, and, you know, and, and that's part of it too, is, is just, be, you know, it's like, we've always done it this way, right? That kind of that, that, cop out you know and, and, and i think everyone now is is really start to evaluate and go okay just because it's always been done you know does not mean we have to continue to do it that way and and i think that that's just one of many examples that you could you could look at so you're you're leading a very prominent division one program how hard was it to change that because i, I it's hard for me to like to imagine myself taking off the reins of if I'm at a high school and and you know the people who know the game know but at the same time it, it doesn't have the same pressure and environment that you have with all eyes on you all the time but just walk us through like that moment that you were like you know what we can do things better we can do things different yeah i you know i i really think um you know Jonathan it it was kind of when, you know, talking a little bit to, to Matt, you know, the, the other thing we went to on base you and, and they, they, they talked about random versus block training, right? Like the, it, it was probably right around that 2018 time that, that I, I think for our program, um, you know, we were really focused on recruiting. We were really, you know, tr just trying to, you know, to get some better players and really quote unquote, develop the guys that we had. Um, but, but I think, there were just some things that kind of came to light that, that it's like really just got us to question like, okay, Hey, why are we doing this? Um, and, and I, I think that's really when we started looking at, at trying to make, you know, make the change. I, I think the other thing is where everyone is looking for um, a little bit of, of an edge, right. Of, Hey, how can we, you know, be good at and definitely at the division one level, you, you have the, uh, a limit of time that you can work on things. So it's just like, okay, if we're going to, you know, be good in, in certain areas, um, we, we, we just need to be really um, 
smart with our time. So I, I think it was just kind of a combination of all those things kind of landed us, uh, you know, where we are today. Sure. No, I think that that's a great point. And, you know, I mentioned Saban earlier, and I, I think that yeah. that this is this is something that that is really interesting for me for coaches because whenever you change programs, years, decades, whatever it is, you've always got to find who fits your program. And you know, you you being such a high academic school, you may not get some of the kids that other programs get, and they just may not be a fit for your program. And so. You know, you've been all around the country and, and gotten to see so many different things. And you've you've probably I know you've taken lots from from everybody, but it's like, OK, yeah. once you got there, you had to find a mold that fit for you guys to be successful, to win, uh, you know, prof- or academically uh, on the field, off the field and whatnot. But just kind of walk us through what you're looking for. You know, you're on the recruiting trail. You're like, these are, these are wildcat guys right here. Like these are the guys that are going to fit the mold for the program. And these might not be. And just, was that something that that you had to figure out on the run or uh, just kind of walk us through a little bit about that? Because I I always find that intriguing. We could take something that somebody else did in a program. They could literally give it us the entire playbook, but Mm -hmm. we may not be able to make it work wherever we're at. And you, and if you ever took a different job, you would probably have to change the same thing. And, and for everyone, because, uh, you know, going back to Saban, I'm sure he did things different from LSU than he did right. does in Alabama now. So long story yeah. short, can you expand on that a little bit? <laughs> no, no. I mean, that, that, that is a, that's a great question, when, especially when you're talking about, you know, uh, Northwestern. And, and I think it's, it's something for us. I, I We didn't completely understand. It's one of the, I would say, um, m- mistakes that that we we and i made early on is that uh, we did try to run it like i was at you know washington state my assistant coach is at you know kansas state you know um and you know our our, our guys really really want to be good on on the field um but they also really really want to be good in the classroom you know and and i think we just really needed to give a space for that we needed to, to acknowledge that and make sure um, you know, like I'll give you an example. Um, one of the things that we've changed, we we used to try to get in on on Fridays if we had a you know six o'clock game, you know, we would try to get in a a lift when we were on the road, um, and it, it, you know just man, it just it wasn't going well. It, we we weren't necessarily getting pushed back, but just the lift, you know. And coach, finally, we had some athletes um, come in and just say, you know, coach, like, and we are like we really use this time to study so that we don't have to stay up late uh, in, in night to study. So like, I, you know, and it was just one of those things of like, <laughs> that w- that just was not going to be, you know, something that happened at schools, you know, past. And so, you know, just being able to really adjust, um, you know, I think on the field players, when we first got the job, we, we definitely wanted guys that were, were skilled that had, had played, a, a high level, and maybe they they lacked some some present strength. That was kind of our sweet spot, um, you know, because if they were skilled and they they had strength, we 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 had a hard time getting them, you know, just to be honest. Sure. Um, and and then you know, finding it didn't they didn't have to be from the south, um, but uh, uh, the south or west. But we found that a lot of guys, you know, from California, from from the south, they they see 9092 so just just the adjustment wasn't as big again i'm speaking in big generalities right, here, not every sure. single player but um that, so th- those are just a couple things that that we kind of found for us that, that 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 sort of worked both on as you know handling the team as well as trying to recruit to um you know northwestern university no, I love that. And again, that's a very broad question, and I probably did a terrible job of it. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's a, no, it's a great question because it, 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 I mean, there are, there are definitely, you know, intricacies and, and differences. So that's, that is a, that's a great question. 
And uh, but but anyway, so you're also an infield guy. Uh, you you have mm-hmm. done a great job outlining the program. But I, I did want to dig in on infielders a little bit because you did a presentation at the World Baseball Coaches Clinic, and I thought that it was it was really really good. And so I encourage any listeners to go back oh. if they want to listen to you speak for an hour of just infield stuff. Then that's that was that is a fantastic thing. But just some different highlights, okay. like what. What did you find uh, that you talked about that people just loved about it? Like, what what were kind of a couple of key points of where people were like, "Hey, tell me more about this or that or or whatever," or just any feedback that you had yeah. that we could uh, that we could just shortly talk about? Yeah, I, I had a great conversation with uh, Jamie Carroll. Um, obviously, Jamie played in the big leagues and um, you know is, is with the Pirates now, and, and he he happened to be you know watching and and um, anyway. It, one of the things that, that we had just talked about it is it's just when we hear people speak of how it can spur um, just some other thoughts and, and, and putting little variations. So I, th- I think one of the things that the, the little bit of feedback that I got was that, that, that people just liked the, um, the many variations that you put on like a routine ground ball. Right. And so like one of the things just for, you know, probably most of your listeners that didn't, that didn't, uh, uh, see the presentation of, um, you know, we would have our infielders like as soon as, as the a pitcher or as soon as the fungal hitter or, or a fungal man is getting ready to shoot a ball, they would take a step back. Right. And, and it, it, what we're trying to simulate is just a bad read. And then how do you adjust from there? Um, or we would have someone take a step forward and then, you know, again, how do you, how do you adjust from there? Um, the, the, just some examples, um, you know, what we, there's a drill two or four, um, you hit a ground ball and you either just, you call out two, which means two step, right, right, left and throw or four, right, left, right, left and throw. Uh, again, just getting guys to have the ability to on the fly. Hey, I, this runner's a little bit faster than I thought. I got to get rid of this ball. Um, he's a little slow out of the box Four. I, I could take my time. Uh, get going towards my target and, and, and drive the ball over to first. So just, just some of those type of variation drills. Uh, I, I, I got, I know I got some good feedback that people uh, liked and, and spurred some other thoughts. I love that. And I actually, so this week's uh, episode that dropped was Jamie Carroll. And I think he, he calls it tap oh. towel training. So I, I really liked, uh, really liked his, his, uh, his yeah. methodology behind it. So it's cool that you guys connected and baseball is such a small world and it, it really is. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> I was just thinking that. It's, yeah. Yeah. He's, his brother's doing a great job down at Evansville and, and, uh, old Missouri Valley guy himself, mm-hmm. uh, Jamie. So yeah, he's, yeah. Turned himself into a heck of a player. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm, uh, I'm going to put the pressure on Wes cause we're going to, we're going to at some point do an episode together. So I'm looking forward to that and, oh, and uh, that'll be good. But, so, okay. So, uh, I do have a lightning section, so I'm going to hit you with some quick hitters and, uh, I know it. you're a learner. Um, I followed you for a long time and I've seen some of the stuff that put out you, that you've put out, which is awesome. But what is the latest thing learned that you're really excited about? You know, th- I'm going to take a little bit of a, a switch on you here. And, th- and this is, um, a book I-, I read and just kind of reading up on it, uh, called eat smarter. And it is uh, kind of on that, that health kick, a uh, guy by the name of Sean Stevenson. But, man, it just blows my mind. Everything from, you know, the pandemic, kind of what we're going through to just everyday health, things that I, I thought maybe I was being healthy with. Um, we can always be better. <laughs> so that, that's, that's, been a, that's been a big one for me just this past three months or so. And um, it, it, I've just I've learned a lot kind of in that in that space. And it's, it's kind of fun to step away a little bit from, uh, from, from baseball as as well. Oh, for sure. We, we always need a, need a side project to be working on for sure. (laughs) What is something that you've changed your mind about? It could either be lately or just something that you used to do that you're like, ah, this is a better way to do it. Yeah. You you know, I, I think the, the, and this is again, kind of overarching, but I used to be big on, um, and wanting like the, the staff to like, kind of have some, like, absolutes like i want the absolutes of of hitting hey what are all of our hitters gonna you know gonna do and don't get me wrong i think there are still some foundational things that are important 
but I, I've just really, I think, changed my mind on it. It's like, you know what? I don't need, and, and, and we don't have to, um, and it all kind of came back to like a little bit of the ego, right? Of like, hey, we want to make sure that all of our hitters do this, right? And man, or all of our pitchers do, you know, why? And, and I, I just think now, man, that's just, we don't need that. <laughs> and I, w I was wrong in trying to uh, achieve that and just putting people in boxes. So I think that's one of the things that I would say that, I really just changed my my tune on is, is the, the whole idea of these absolutes oh, same I, I can definitely feel i feel you on that what is a drill that your players love that we can steal from you yeah i i would say live defense so this is a team drill first and third i think it, it might have originated stanford uh mark mactoff at gonzaga travis jewett is kind of where i uh, Donnie Marvin when I was at Washington State, um, but you you have runners on first and third. You have a coach out there with an L screen. Um, there's one out, and the hitter is trying to hit a smash a line drive ground ball through the infield, uh, and you end up just playing it live. And any and every scenario that you can think of will come up: base running, decision making. Um, you know, you can add little variants in it as well. The runner at first is, is not running, right? So he has to, it's a bait, you know, he has to read a line drive. Um, balls get to the outfield. Do I go first to third? It's my absolute favorite drill. You could do it at a really fast pace where, where people are kind of pressed to make decisions. Um, I love that drill. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I usually tell, tell everyone about that. For sure. And, and it, again, it, it's how many live reps can you get within that in, in a short period of time? Oh, yeah. You know, what, what a lot of times, too, we'll do teams. So if you go five minutes each, you're usually getting a pitch off about every 15 seconds. So, I mean, you can kind of do the math there and, and guys are running. It, it, it's It'll be you'll get a not that you, you run the condition in baseball, but you get a little conditioning piece out of it as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're probably for each side, you're probably getting close to, to 30 reps and then you, you flip teams, uh, or at least you get some new hitters and runners in there, new defense in there, uh, pitchers. If, if the ball hits the L screen, a pitcher has a ball and it automatically starts a one, six, three double play. Um, you know, you get rundowns in there as, as well. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a fun drill. Um, and, and it just really forces guys to make decisions quickly and, and have to make plays. You see the guys that can slow the game down and, and the ones that it, it can speed up on them. Oh, for sure. I love it. And then final thing, I know that, that everyone listens to podcasts at the very end to try and figure out what book should I be reading? So if you had an unlimited budget to buy one book or just resource in general for every listener that you know that they like, that they would like, what would that be? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with this one. This is a little bit outside the box again, but this is um, Golf's Sacred Journey by David Cook. It is a it's a, it's a quick and easy read. Um, it, it has zero to do really about golf. It, it's nothing. It's it's more. It's it's a, it's a parable, right? It, it's it's a story. A um, little bit of faith based in there as well. I, I, it's an easy easy read. It, it's it's a fun one. Um, that that is. That's one that I would I would recommend. The, the other one, kind of a uh, that I, I read about uh, six months ago, is um, the gift of failure. To I think any anyone that has uh, kids, um, as far as raising family, uh, this is is a good one. But you can also obviously uh, apply it to the game of, of baseball and coaching as well. So yeah, golf sacred journey. The gift of failure would be two that I would. Uh, I know you only asked for one, but th th there you go. Extra credit. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take that all day for sure. Well, Coach Allen, I man, I appreciate your time, especially in season. I know that time is a very sacred commodity for all of us during this time of year. So uh, again, thank you so much. Let me be the first to say that you brought it today, and, and I know that that I'm down here just jotting notes like crazy. But I did want to <laughs> give you so, give you an opportunity to talk to our listeners a little bit before we go, and so I'll, I'll link your uh, your contact info in the show notes. But is there anything else that you'd like yeah. that you'd like to tell our listeners before you go? 
No, man, I, I just, it's funny how things come full circle. And, and, and I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm on here, but I, I just remember diving into your, um, your podcast with, with, with Dave. I, I've got the notes on my Evernote right now. And, and, uh, and, and now you're hosting me here. So it's, it's just, it's just cool how that works. Um, and, and just, you know, be, be a learner. I think we all are. Uh, spread your wings a little bit. If you're a baseball guy, make, make sure you're learning more than just baseball, you know, figure out a little bit about the stock market and, and uh, you know, j just really spread your wings that way and, and um, continue to work, uh, work at it. It's, it's a lot of fun that way. Thank you for listening to Ahead of the Curve. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, which can include Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, or YouTube. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please share it on social media to help get the word out. Once again, thank you for joining us.